Joining me right now is Republican presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy. Vivek, great to have you this weekend. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you, Maria. Good to be back. Ma major developments. Uh, Donald Trump indicted a second time, this time from the DOJ, on the very same day that we learned Congress has confirmed the whistleblower's account that Joe Biden accepted $5 million in exchange for policy changes for America. Your response? Maria, I think this is even bigger than just the disparity between Trump and Biden. We have two standards of justice in this country. One, if you're a BLM, Antifa, violent rioter. Another, if you're a peaceful January 6th protester. One standard for Julian Assange, who sits in a prison abroad, foreign prison, while Chelsea Manning, the transgender individual who leaked to him, would had her sentence commuted by President Obama. So this is part of a repeated pattern, and yet now we see we have one standard of justice that applies to Joe Biden, a different standard that applies to Donald Trump. And so this is a symptom, Maria, of a deeper abandonment of the rule of law in our culture. And that's a sad thing, because the rule of law is part of what it means to be an American. Speaking, I'm a millennial. I'm the first millennial ever to run for the GOP nomination as president. Speaking as a member of my generation, Maria, I thought I would never see the day when the president of the United States oversaw a Justice Department that used police force to arrest his lead political rival in the middle of an election. Yet here we are. To me, that's not the America that you and I know. That is a distortion of it. And part of the reason I'm running for president is I think once and for all, we need to revive the essence of this country rather than the hollowed out husk of a nation that we've become. How will you actually get things back to uh, the rule of law? You've got lots of competition. You've got Mike Pence, Chris Christie, Doug Burgum officially launching their campaign this week. Take a look. We must resolve that Joe Biden will never be reelected. We need to return our party to those time honored conservative principles. We need a leader who's clearly focused on three things, economy, energy, and national security. Let me be very clear. I am going out there to take out Donald Trump. I want to be the nominee and I want to be the guy who beats Joe Biden. What do you make of your new competition and how will you uh, differentiate yourself when it comes to this two-tier justice system, Vivek? I'm the outsider in this race, Maria. That's a hard fact. And you're not going to be able to take on the corrupt, corrupt administrative police state if you're a product of that very system. A lot of professional politicians in this race, I respect many of them for their service to the country and other roles. But when we're talking about who leads the White House, who leads the executive branch of government, we actually need a chief executive in that White House. I think that's going to become the tradition in the GOP, Maria. We're going to be the party that repeatedly puts up the outsider in the White House. Trump was that outsider in 2016. I'm the outsider in this race. And I think that I bring a lesson and understanding of the Constitution as a CEO that if somebody works for you and you cannot fire them, that means they don't work for you. It means you work for them because you're responsible for what they do without having any accountability to change it. That's the problem with the administrative state as it exists today. I think it is fundamentally unconstitutional and I will not make a false promise as other politicians will to reform it. I will shut it down on strong constitutional authority. That includes even the FBI, which is part of a corrupt administrative police state that should not exist. Keep the U.S. Marshals, but we don't need the FBI. That's going to be the way that I govern, and you're not going to get that from a single other professional politician in this field. I'm self-made. I'm not reliant on the donor class. I've self-funded the start of my campaign with over $10 million in of my family's money. Hard earned, not inherited, with no cap to what we'll put in. 40,000 plus small dollar donors in the first number of weeks alone come along with us. That's what's different from many politicians who I think are beholden to other interests that restrict what they say and frankly will restrict what they do while in office. And I think yeah. our base understands that what we need is an actual outsider that'll get that job done. All of this two-tier system uh, that we're talking about has put America in a vulnerable position. China is now accusing the United States of spreading rumors with the multiple reports that we've been reporting detailing uh, the alleged plans to make pay billions of dollars to Cuba for a spy base in Cuba about 100 miles away from Florida. 
The White House and the Defense Department are calling these reports inaccurate. But the Pentagon says they will continue to monitor the relationship between Havana and Beijing. You've got Secretary of State Blinken heading to China this month. For the first time since that spy balloon flew across the United States, no word yet on when or if President Biden will actually push back and have a meeting with President Xi Jinping to ask why they sent a spy balloon here, why they uh, built police stations in America. So how would your handling of China be any different if you were president? My handling of China is going to be different because I will make sure we're not economically dependent on our enemy for our modern way of life. And that's the real problem, Maria. If that had been a Russian spy balloon flying over half the United States, I have no doubt in my mind that we would have shot it down instantly and ratcheted up sanctions on Russia. The reason we don't do it for China is that because we're dependent on them for our modern way of life, for the shoes on our feet to the phones in our pockets. And that's what's different about this Cold War with China than the Cold War of the last century versus the USSR. Even under Reagan, we didn't depend on them for the way we live our lives. So what I've said is we will declare independence from China. I think that includes re-entering trade relationships with Japan, South Korea, India, much of the Pacific Rim, bringing in a lot of that capacity to the United States, but also using other allied countries to do it. That puts me across the table from Xi Jinping to say that Unless you radically reform and meet our conditions, actually participate as an equal participant in the global economy, then we're cutting the cord and that will hurt China more than it hurts us. That's how we win without actually going to war. I also think we've been distracted by other foreign policy priorities like the Ukraine war, like Russia. Mm. I think the real threat is the CCP and we need to wake up to that reality. Foreign policy is about prioritization and I will lead this country accordingly. Yeah, it's amazing to me. Uh, Xi Jinping gave a speech back in 2020, and in that speech, he said, we need to ensure that the world is is dependent on the Chinese supply chain so that we can turn it off whenever we we need to. So that's the whole point here. Make everybody dependent on China so that they can decide when to turn the lights off. That is absolutely the point. They're exercising leverage. Much of this is part of their 500-year plan. Our fault is we're thinking on the scale of two-year election cycles while they're thinking on the time scales of history. What I'm going to bring to our foreign policy is a little more Churchill, a little less Chamberlain, thinking on that time scale of history. I also think, Maria, no candidate in either party is talking about this. The top threat is the Russia-China alliance. We need to wake up to that. And I think that that's something that I'm very focused on is disrupting that alliance, a reverse maneuver of what Nixon did in 1972 with Mao. That's what I want to do with Putin and Xi Jinping. It's a great point. Vivek, great to see you. Thanks very much for weighing in on all of that. We'll be watching. Thank you. All right, Vivek uh, Ramaswamy, a big week for your money. Meanwhile, two major inflation reports and the highly anticipated Federal Reserve rate decision. 